KCAL News Mornings. Last night's vice president presidential debate certainly had a different feel, I'd say, and by the end, we got a mostly civil discussion on issues that matter to voters, but will it move the needle at all this election cycle? Yeah, we saw them shake hands at the end. Definitely know, oh, and, and like hang out yeah, right? for a minute. Well, joining us now is Democratic st strategist Michael Trujillo and Republican strategist Matthew Klink. Thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, let's start with the overall debate. Quickly, how would you grade each candidate and will their performance persuade voters? Let's start with Michael. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, vice presidential debates never matter, but I thought last night uh, we saw Governor Walls be Minnesota nice and we saw J.D. Vance be Ohio weird. Um, and that was essentially last night's debate. It was civil, yes. And I think for a lot of Republicans and a lot of Americans, I think they forgot what it sounds or what it looks like to be a normal Republican who isn't talking about eating dogs and cats. And that was good. <laughs> well, that is, that's true. Uh, Matthew? Thank you for that unbiased uh, summation there, Michael. But, no, look, uh, J.D. Vance, he, he crushed uh, Governor Waltz last night. He gets an A. Governor Waltz gets a C. He looked like a deer in the headlights uh, for the first 15 minutes of the debate, which is what most people watched because it was a punishingly long two-hour process on CBS. However, I will agree with, with Michael that it was a largely cordial debate. They agreed with each other a lot. It was much more civil, and the discourse was, I think, productive if people stuck it out to the end. But if you watch the first 15 minutes, you saw J.D. Vance run circles around and outclass Governor Waltz. Very quickly, before we get to the issues, uh, along these lines, with the civility point, was this a mistake for either candidate to go that way? Should they have maybe, like, uh, ratcheted things up a little bit, Michael? No, I think what you saw last night is the fourth grade teacher, public school teacher, that is Governor Walls. Uh, I think you saw, you know, a veteran, a teacher, uh, a guy who just loves being a father, and that's what he had to present last night. Not a lot of Americans know who he is. And so in terms of, like, introducing himself uh, in a really friendly manner, uh, that was last night's point. Um, you know, he's not a prosecutor. He's a former public school teacher, and I, I think Americans learned that last night. Matthew? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I largely agree. I think last night was humanizing for both candidates. It showed a side of both candidates that clearly each campaign wants them to see. I think J.D. Vance did himself big favors uh, by the way he talked and the way that he related to Governor Waltz. And again, I just think it was refreshing for the largely dysfunctional uh, presidential debate that we had, you know, a couple weeks ago. So it it was a welcome a welcome breath of fresh air in 2024 election. Well, season. that's some polling is showing that the people would like these two to be at the top of the ticket and not who we I have. Know, right? So yeah. uh, <laughs> let's get to the issues though now. Starting with abortion, uh, we want to play what the candidate said and then get your reaction on the other side. This this issue is what's on everyone's mind. Donald Trump put this all into motion. He brags about how great it was that he put the judges in and overturned Roe versus Wade, 52 years of personal autonomy. And then he tells us, oh, we send it to the states. It's a beautiful thing. Their project 2025 is going to have a registry of pregnancies. It's going to make it more difficult, if not impossible, to get contraception and limit access, if not eliminate access to infertility treatments. I want us as a Republican Party to be pro-family in the fullest sense of the word. I want us to support fertility treatments. I want us to make it easier for moms to afford to have babies. I want it to make it easier for young families to afford a home so they can afford a place to raise that family. And I think there's so much that we can do on the public policy front just to give women more options. Now, now, of course, Donald Trump has been very clear that on the abortion policy specifically, the proper way to handle this, as messy as democracy sometimes is, is to let voters make these decisions, let the individual states make their abortion policy. All right, just some of the issues that they talked about last night. Let's start with Matthew. Matthew, what's your reaction to what you heard? It's the strongest part of the debate. Clearly, he's very comfortable talking about this issue, and it's a, and it's one that the Democrats do, I think, plus 15, maybe plus 16 better than Republicans on and talking about voters. What that exchange missed, though, was it was a really good exchange that 
if handled thoughtfully, it's how this dicey issue should be discussed between the candidates. But I will point out, Chris, this is a second tier issue. Im or the you know the economy is far and away the number one issue, and immigration is number two. The voters that are going to vote pro-choice, they're already voting for Kamala Harris and, and Governor Waltz. So this didn't sway anybody, but the discussion was a good point in the debate. And again, I give kudos to Governor Waltz. He was his sharpest during this section. How about you, Michael? What's your reaction to, to what you heard? Well, I think last night underscored the point that Republicans don't believe economists, they don't believe scientists, they don't believe doctors, and they don't think women should have the right to choose what kind of health care they have over their own bodies. What J.D. Vance said about letting the states decide, that is a Swiss cheese model of health care for women. Some states have it, some states don't. you got to travel 600 miles while seven or six months pregnant in a car to figure out if you're going to do what's right for your own body. That's insane. Uh, so last night, again, we saw Minnesota nice versus Ohio weird. Well, there were those hot button issues. There was immigration. There was the economy. People can go online and kind of take a listen to that. But I think one of the most fiery moments came toward the end when the January 6th um, insurrection was discussed. Let's go ahead and take a clip of that. Remember, he said that on January the 6th, the protesters ought to protest peacefully. And on January the 20th, what happened? Joe Biden became the president. Donald Trump left the White House. And now, of course, unfortunately, we have all of the negative policies that have come from the Harris-Biden administration. He was very clear. I mean, he lost this election, and he said he didn't. 140 police officers were beaten at the Capitol that day. That's right. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did, that, is a damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Matthew, is this a misstep here? No, not at all. In fact, it's disappointing that you didn't focus on the, on the most important issue, which is the economy. But look, uh, Governor, uh, Governor Waltz is going to make the case that, uh, that January 6th is a defining moment for Donald Trump. I think that Tim, or excuse me, that uh, J.D. Vance parried that properly by talking about the Waltz and Harris, you know, ongoing support of massive government censorship for what they perceive as disinformation, which is equally a threat to democracy. So neither candidate answered the response to either one. And I will finally, unless I'll turn it over to Michael, who I'm sure has a different take on this, that, you know, this came at the very end of the debate. And I doubt that you know, many, many viewers stuck it through the two hour debate to see it. But again, it was a great interchange between the two candidates. And I think that uh, J.D. Vance acquitted himself well here. Michael? I slightly disagree with Matt. It wasn't a defining moment for Trump. January 6th was a defining moment for our country. Uh, you had these folks raid and riot and go into our capital. People died. Uh, cops were beaten, uh, all because they wanted to stop Vice President Mike Pence, who was not on the stage last night. And I wonder why. Uh, was it because they were trying to hang him outside of that, you know, outside of the Capitol on January 6th? They were trying to stop Vice President Mike Pence from counting the electoral college votes to allow Joe Biden to become president. So, yeah, it was not peaceful. Uh, there's a reason why Mike Pence wasn't on the debate stage last night. And that should tell your viewers everything they need to know about Donald Trump. All right. Well said, both of you. Thank you both for joining us, Michael and Matthew. Always a pleasure to kind of hear your outlook from both of you. So, all right. We'll see you guys next time.